Hi guys, this is our tutorial on deriving and understanding the marginal rate of substitution. We use calculus to derive what MRS is and then we explore the different types of preferences expressed by different types of indifference curves. So we talked about this in our last lecture that the marginal rate of substitution is the maximum amount of one good a consumer is willing to give up to obtain one more of another good. So the sacrifice of good Y uh, that you have to make in order to get one more unit of good X. Um, example, uh, MRS of negative three means that a consumer is willing to give up three units of good Y, right? So this is if this is this good Y and this is good X. So you're willing to give up three units of good Y to get one more unit of good X, right? So this is the slope of the indifference curve. That's the MRS. Now, let's recall some calculus here. A lot of our students actually have done this in math for econ one or two, but they kind of forget about this. So this is a quick refresher to kind of, um, you know, get you back to, uh, you know, marginal analysis and derivatives. Uh, so just to review that the total differential of any multivariate function, you know, multivariate is when utility or any function depends on two variables, X and Y. So the total differential is given by uh, this, partial differential. So this is the par first order condition. This, sorry, this is the first derivative, partial derivative with respect to x times change in x plus partial derivative of u with respect to y times change in y. So this is called a total differential. And right here I have an example with uber fair to kind of give you a sense of what we're trying to do, what a total differential means. Um, let's say our uber fare is a function of distance and time, right? So any taxi fare is a function of distance and time. And so the change in fare then should depend on uh, the derivative of fare with respect to distance times the change in distance plus the derivative of fare with respect to time times change in time. So essentially this, how would you interpret this? This is the fare per unit of time, right? So this is what Uber charges per mile. This is what Uber charges per minute, right? And so it's charges per mile times the distance times the miles traveled plus the charges in time per unit of time times the time travel. This is going to give you the total change in fare for any taxi ride, right? So that's what we're trying to do, except we're trying to do this with utility function. So let's apply this to our indifference curve. So we already talked about this. We said the total differential is given by uh, partial of utility with respect to x times change in x plus partial of utility with respect to y times change in y. And then further we said in on, on an indifference curve the change in utility should be zero. Right? Because you, you, if you're indifferent then by definition the change in utility should be zero. All right, so let me try to isolate out, rearrange this expression, and I wanna isolate out delta y over delta x because that's what gives me the slope, rise over run. So if I rearrange this, I get partial of u with respect to y times change in y equals negative, so I just move this term on the other side, this guy, and I wanna isolate out delta y over delta x from this thing, so delta y over delta x would be equal to partial of u with respect to x over partial of u with respect to y. Now this thing can also be written as, so the numerator is the marginal utility of x and the denominator is the marginal utility of y. This thing is your MRS. So this is super important. Right, so now you know that the MRS, which is change in Y over change in X, is a ratio of the two marginal utilities of the utility function. Okay, so the MRS actually is a diminishing function. So we, we can recall that this top graph represents your regular utility, right? So this is your Z, pizzas per semester, and then your utility, this is your utility function. The bottom graph is the marginal utility function, which is simply implying that marginal utility is diminishing in its nature, right? So as you add, have more of something, um, your marginal utility kind of goes down, okay? And also, as you have less of something, your marginal utility goes up. So this is important. 
more of something, marginal utility goes down, less of something, marginal utility goes up. How am I going to use this for MRS? MRS is negative of MUX over MUY. So if on an indifference curve, as I go f towards having more X, think about what's going to happen. As I get more X, what happens to my MUX goes up. And as, and the, as I get more X, I will get less Y, which means MUY goes sorry as I get more X MUX goes down and MUY goes up and so this fraction should go down which means MRS which is the slope of the indifference curve has to go down right which we can see here that it's high getting smaller getting smaller getting smaller so uh, this is also what gives us convexity by the way so this diminishing MRS is what gives us convexity. We just looked into this. We said as you consume more X, your MUX goes down and MUY goes up, which makes the MRS go down. And so we can see as we move in this direction, our MRS is diminishing. This is what gives us convexity, right? And so this is the explanation. You can read, you can, you can also download these slides, by the way, if you, if you request us on our website. Um, so this diminishing MRS gives our indifference curves the convex shape that we have. Most indifference curves are convex, but you know there are some exceptions. We're going to talk about them real quick. Uh, number one exception is perfect substitute. So what is the MRS of these preferences? Well, this is just negative one, and it stays constant. If you think about it, the, the slope here and here and here is constant. So this is a special case called the perfect substitutes. Um, why is it constant, by the way? Because the rate at which you give up Coke for one more Pepsi is not going to change because you think these are perfect substitutes. So the mathematical form of this production, form, this uh, uh, indifference curve is going to be something like this. Alpha X plus beta Y. In this case, this is simply one X plus one Y, right? So what would be MUX in this case? Well, that's just one. What's MUY? That's also 1. And so what's MRS? That's negative of MUX over MUY. That's just negative 1. And it's constant. So typically you would have, this is the key thing here, this plus sign typically, meaning it's a straight line. So you don't have a curve, which means the slope of a straight line stays constant, doesn't change. Then you have perfect complements. Um, these are special case, again a special case. These are L-shaped because these are things that go in a certain proportion. So first of all, MRS is undefined because in this region, the slope is infinity. In this region, the slope is zero. So you don't really get a slope because it's not a continuous function. So we don't get to find the MRS. Um, it's a special case saying that you need things in certain proportions. For instance, in, you, you want one pi and one ice cream to go together. I maybe need, uh, let's say if this is sugar, I need two sugars and one coffee always together. So if I have one cup of coffee and let's say three sugars or four sugars, it makes no difference to my life. So you can see that more is not better in this case because I am indifferent to having more sugar because I don't consume sugar by itself. I need coffee to go with it. And since I don't have coffee, I will not gain any utility. So if you want to give me more utility, you have to give me more coffee and more sugar in that exact same proportion. So I can have two cups of coffee, but then I will need four, four sachets of sugar, and then I'll end up on a higher utility. So that proportionality has to be maintained. So it doesn't have to be one to one like pie and ice cream. It can be like two to one, right? Because one coffee and two sugars. So the mathematical form of this, and this is kind of important, we'll delve into this in the next lectures, is going to look something like this, min. So whenever you see this min function, you should know that this is L-shaped and this is perfect complements. The identification of this mathematically is also very important. Um, and most of the time, so what we get is what we have imperfect substitutes, which are somewhere between perfect substitutes and perfect complements, right? So the convex indifference curves that we typically deal with are called imperfect substitutes. That's the most realistic one that we deal with. The mathematical form, the Cobb-Douglas one, is very simple. You've seen this before, is x alpha, y beta, or with the log form, which could be alpha ln x plus beta 
L and Y. Now this plus is not the one with uh, perfect substitutes. This is still Cobb Douglas and this is still convex uh, because this is with logarithms, right? So if, if there is LN, this could still be a convex function, right? So this is the general math form of these functions. Um, this is just talking about how these guys can change. So your preferences can change, for instance, to begin with, if you have less of food and less of clothing, these could be perfect complements because you know you can't, you you have to uh, use them together. Like I need food to stay alive, but I also need clothing. But as I get more of these, they kind of become substitutes. So you see that this is almost like complements here, but then it becomes a straight line in, in an extreme sense. So this is just telling the preferences can change. Just to think about something. Um, in our next few lectures, we will talk about you know different preferences, which we haven't talked about in this lesson, which is quasi-linear, cons constant elasticity of substitution, imperfect complements. We can also have concave preferences, rare but you know possible. Um, finally, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, let us know if you want us to make more videos.